Hello everyone, audio check, just making sure everything everything looks right. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. If not, let me know and I will turn it up. Looks like everything is working today. Still nervous about that stuff falling apart after that first stream. But all right, thanks everyone for joining in today. Um, I'm really excited. Um, so far, we've gotten this project along quite nicely. We have some navigation. Um, we'll work on some more of the navigation today. And we also have some of the list views working to where we can scroll through and see things. And let's make that a little bit better. And we can probably fill out some more cells today. And um, I'm ready to do some of the SVG stuff. We'll jump in and throw SVGs in places, since that's how all of my in-app artwork is, aside from album artwork. Um, after that, we might jump in and, if we have time, work on the now playing stuff. I think we're getting pretty close to having the UI flushed out enough to where once we have the UI and we can navigate through, we might be able to start jumping into some audio playback. So it'll probably take a couple a couple sessions to get audio playback working. Just, it's a complicated thing. Hey, a new follower. Thank you, Jane Gray. Super exciting. Um, as always, I like these to be interactive. So if you have questions or you want me to explain something or you see I'm doing something really stupid, speak up and get that fixed. Um, but yes, definitely I'm going to switch over to my code now and I'm just going to run the app just to show where we're at. Like I said, we've gotten it pretty far along and then we'll jump right in. There's a couple things that I did notice since I started playing with it. Um, one of them is selecting on a cell will crash right now just due to my iList implementation not being complete. Um, and we're also missing like navigation things. So I want to fix that. And I don't like a couple things I have in there that are wrong, so let's just cancel that uh, and let's jump right in. So the first thing I want to fix though is, actually I'll show you that crash. As soon as we click on a list item, it's going to go boom. And it has to do with how Xamarin Forms does their notifications. If I just press play, I can see that whole stack. Oh yeah, the text is going to be too small. But what happens is when you when the binding when the selected item binding context changes on the list view, it then goes and looks up what its index is, and I don't fill that out for these purposes. It's not really needed. I'm not going to fill it out properly. I just throw a not implemented exception. Let's jump. Where's that at? Songs page. We have. Oh, wow, I haven't renamed all that. It's still items view. Well, we should clean that stuff up. All right. So go to the simple database source. And actually, if I double click right here in the log, I don't know if everyone knows that, but if you double click on your own source code in the log, it will jump there, which is really nice. So for now, we're just going to report a negative one. What I should do to make this work right is to go back and look up what the index is from the database. But excuse me, that could be very, very complicated due to the grouping and lists and things like that. So I'm not going to do that. We don't actually use the index anyway. And all that is is for on the item selected, oh, that's not hooked up yet, but on the item selected, it passes back the, when it changes, it passes you back the binding context, or the, sorry, the selected item as well as its index. And we just don't need the index here. We do in other places, but not in these list views. So that'll fix that crash. First little bug fixed. Let's close these off. All right, I'm going to jump over to the root view, root page. There's a couple things that I wanted to, Point out in here that I don't like. One being is this needs to be in a navigation page. I like wrapping these things so it's nice and pretty and we get our headers. And we're just going to do that for these. Oh, I removed those. Let's wrap this navigation page again. And that will make it to where now when we run it, Actually, it's not going to look right on this first run because of how I'm doing something else I don't like, which we're also about to fix. You'll notice I'm also newing up a songs page here, so technically I have two instances of it. We're going to make it to where it uses that. Uh, here we go. So the first time we don't get the navigation, but then if I navigate, now we get it. So yeah, navigate to get the navigation. All right. So I'm going to do one other thing. Since I have these as two separate things, I will do... I, the reason I'm going to put this out into its own place is I want to be able to save the index of what's selected. I talked about that in the first stream. I like to remember where you're at. If you're in the our radio and that's the only tab you ever use, let's just always bring you back to the radio. Maybe we can implement that while we're out here today. Get control page. And right now we will return um, nice and simple now. 
um, items zero dot page. So that way it'll use that exact instance, which is useful. If they navigate through, then switch. You want to keep them navigated. All right, so we'll just say get initial page and do that here as well. I was thinking through, I do like that slide up navigation. Maybe we'll switch off of a slide off and make it a pop up. Then we wouldn't have to do these two weird things. We might not be able to use shell, but can't use shell. I've or I looked at it with how, um, with how I'm doing my weird double navigation thing. All right, so I'm going to run this again just to make sure I fixed it. And we're at it. Maybe I will fix the, maybe I will set the, do the settings for remembering which index it is. Hey, okay, so now it says browse, which I want it to say songs, and I don't want that G music. I want it to be an icon, so we'll fix that, but, you know, starting to come together. And our drawer still works. Perfect. And we can select on things, and it doesn't blow up. Yay, those were the initial things I really wanted to fix that were driving me nuts as I've been looking at it. Um, while we're at it, let's just fix this thing, because I want to do that right as well. So. What I do here is I have this side nav side navigation page. We'll go to that, and oh, I have two. Oh, because it's the XAML. Okay. Now I'm gonna. Oh, I didn't want to go to the XAML. Set. Okay. So inside of here, what we'll do is we're gonna cast this on a navigation item. What I tend to do in my sidebar is I have the navigation items, and I also have the menu items. And so this will be nice because the menu, the navigation should cast fine. And inside of here, this args, where it says that selected item index, this is what was causing us to crash on selecting items. We have that now. So what we'll do is we will do, inside my settings, I believe, I have current, maybe it's menu, something index. Current menu index equals, uh, this will be e dot selected item index. So now it'll be really easy. And I think this has all the fancy logic in here. It returns two because on my old one, or because typically I have the header in there that says like, let's go to the old app so I can show you what I mean. What machine am I developing on? I am on a MacBook Pro, um, current gen, I believe. Maybe I'm one behind, something like that. And I just have it hooked up to an external 4K monitor. LG has 4K monitors that are like half the price of Apple's 5K ones, and they still do the same USB-C stuff, so it's kind of what I went with. All right, so starting out, I have search, and then my music, and then I have, I default to the artist as the first one. Um, I want to, I've always wanted to develop like a homepage for G Music to where it has like, hey, here's what's trending, here's what's popular, but I've never done that, so eventually that would make the most sense to give them first. But... Let's fix this, or if not, it's going to do an index out of range. We can leave it at two for now. Let's create a couple things in there. So for now, what do I have? How do I do my, I have my, I'm back, losing train of thought. So I have my navigation items. Let's create, and with the navigation items, it has the title and the page. Perfect. We will also, maybe we just do it to where it's got a, actually, I know how we'll do that. We'll say if the page is not null. Now we can use this navigation item for multiple things. So in here, what we'll do is instead of doing this, what we'll do if um, item.page is not equal to null, do all this. OK, so that way. If it's not null, we'll save it. If it is, that way if you select on one of these header style things, it shouldn't do anything. I actually didn't even, I disabled selection on them in the old one, but that's what we'll do is we'll just take care of that. So now if I jump back to the root page, we can add in new navigation item and we'll say title equals search, which will eventually have a page. And then new navigation item and we'll do title equals G music. And I want to do something fancier with the styling because you want it to look separate. You don't, if we, once we add the icons in and things like that, it should make it better. Actually, my music. Case. Perfect. 
So now we're, we'll get closer. It'll look a little bit better. Oh, I can spell music, right? As many times as I spell it in this code base, you think I could do it right the first time. As I said, I wanted to do what did I mess up. Oh, it has to do with that index. All right, so right now I'm sending it to a null page. So index two should be this. Let's really quick. <laughs> I didn't fix that. So I fixed one thing, but not the other one. So that one was setting it to a null page, which it doesn't like. So get page, no semicolon there. Turn. Actually, I don't need, I can sleep it in the syntax I had it before. The settings default, so I will just do settings dot current. Now, if I was smart, I would do an index check and make sure I'm not doing anything out of range, but since I don't know how you could ever set this to anything out of range, this should technically be fine. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I'm lazy like that. I see no point in adding an extra check when I ensure that can't happen. The only time this could cause an issue is if I was to change that menu around and then it was now setting something null that wasn't before. But which might happen with us being in development mode. It's, you know, let's do it right because I can easily see myself breaking that later and then live stream and be like, why is this not working? You guys could all make fun of me. Okay, so what we will do is we'll say if, actually, it's not really the range that's an issue, it's if it's null. So what we can do is, I think I know how I want to solve this. I'm not worried about having an issue with it out of range. So what we'll do is we'll just do a null check on there. And if it's null, we'll do items dot select. Uh, oh, I don't have to use a link. Option space, add the using select. Yeah, select next dot pin. X, why can't I type today? X dot page, uh, where or dot first or default, X not equal to null. All right, so grab the first page where it's not null and we'll just default to that. That should be nice. And actually I can leave this back at zero just to see if it blows up because it should. There, oh, should I actually need to put an X in there. All right, let's see if that works. And then I need to fix the settings back. Just that menu being so, uh, why is, I thought it was a breakpoint. All right, hey, that worked. All right, and so now we're gonna put it on artists. So it should have saved that. Now let's go back and fix this to be settings.currentMenuIndex. Our get initial page should now properly choose the artist, I hope. And if not, if it can't, for some strange reason, it should fall back. Hey, we are on the artist page. Super exciting. Okay, so I wonder on the songs page, do I have a title on this? Is that why that has the weird a browse title? Yes. All right, it's getting it from binding context, which would be, in this case, for some reason, we still haven't named items view model. Let me check in some code before we do too much more. Um, so far, I do love using GitHub app because it's super easy just to fix this. Um, fixed crash with select items. And if I don't like that if I'm adding a bunch of extra white noise, I like how I can just select things out, but in this case, we still want it all. And now we fixed navigation. Super descriptive. Descriptive. Okay, um, let's rename this because naming items is not cool. Old legacy stuff. So model that save that song. Okay, that should be done there. Let's just make. Oh, I was still running. Refactoring while running, never safe. But it looks like it worked. Run, just make sure. And then. Uh, 
rid of that. There's lots of refactorings, like them separate them out. Perfect. Yay! Super exciting. All right, so now let's go to that songs view model. And it has a title. We're going to name it songs. That should be a lot better. Did this on the artist page. Actually, we don't want to name it songs. What am I thinking? We have our localization class that has all of our localizations, and I want to call it songs from there because, and I, that means I also messed up when I was doing our page here. And why I didn't notice it when I already had it elsewhere. Strings dot um, search dot um, library. What did I call that one music library heading. That makes sense. All right. So it's not horrible to go back and fix all these later, but looking for every place in your code that has a string and that's just painful. I've done that a couple times before, and so since I have this localization already ready, I don't want to redo that from the start. Let me just do it right the first time. It will make my life a lot easier. Okay, perfect. Run that. Now we're not going to check that stuff in. Changes. Uh, let's jump back to the artist page while that's loading and see do I have a title set here? I do not. We will. Bind that again. Did the artist page have a binding? I can't remember. Not. This dot title equals strings. strings dot artists. Really nice just having that one place. Um, so for filling out the other languages, I did not do it all myself. Um, what I did was I actually, at one point, Gmusic was really, really popular. I used to have. I don't know, half a million active users. So it was really easy to ask my user base to do it um, and just say, hey, does anyone want to add these versions? And a lot of people actually contacted me myself or contacted me themselves asking if they could add them. So what I did was I did a, I did it a couple different ways at first. When I was first doing it, Gmusic was iOS only. And so I tried doing it using Apple's um, localization stuff. But the .NET localization stuff is just great and works cross-platform, so I switched to that. And what I did was I just put up some Google, Google Docs and just asked everybody to contribute things to it. And then I went through and did a Google search to verify the translations, but no one did anything anything nasty. So I do have French, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Russian, um, Chinese, and English, and, and German, of course, and Spanish. So those are the ones that people have done. If you ever want to contribute, this is, I mean, it's up in the repo. It's totally open source. Um, you can use these, whatever. But I had, yeah, I had community sourced them. So And I did pay, I think I paid someone to do one of them on Fiverr just because I wanted it. Um, can't remember which one. So, yeah, I did Fiverr one of them. So, yeah. Ah, thanks for the follow, Tony. Um, but yes, um, but yeah, it's really easy to get if it's something people want to use. They want to use it in their own language, so it's really easy to get them done. If not, Fiverr. I think on average for the languages, I would spend five to ten dollars per language. I think I did one or two of them that way, and then the rest were all community driven is really nice. All right. And we were running this. So now we have, how did I just fix that? Artist page. I thought it should have had a title. And oh, wait, you said can a French version, there's something you can, so I don't know if you're asking if I can get a um, French version or, okay, it's not doing it. I just must have done it before I press build. Um, yeah, you can make the default whatever you want. Right now I default to English just because I, it's what I speak and that's what I do all my stuff in. But yeah, you can make the default whatever you want, but English just makes the most sense to me. And yeah, and you can even, um, You'll notice you can, with these strings, you can make it to where it's even region specific. So right now I, I do just have a Spanish one, but you can do like Mexico versus Spain versus um, any country really. And so you can even do like a UK version of the English, which if you wanted to, if yeah, do inside jokes for your different, na uh, di different nations, that totally works as well. But I'm lazy, so I just did the default ones. 
Okay, so now we have artists and where are we at? Okay, so we have artists, that cell, those cells need a lot of work still. We have our song cells. I wanted to make sure that we did our SVGs and do some SVG loading because that's how I do all my stuff. Uh, so let's commit what we have. Added titles. Oh, I didn't save the root page, so it didn't actually change that. Added titles and evaluations. I haven't been committing. I've been doing one big commit at the end of each one, but we'll just push those up now. Okay, so to do some SVGs, we're going to want to go in and add a couple new gits. We did add the FFmpeg or FF image loading already, but let's add the forms one for SVGs. So that way we can easily add SVGs in. Now, at first I was a little bit worried about how we're going to do the SVGs, seeing as um, I, I just didn't know how it worked. And I did a little bit of research before this last stream, and I'm actually really, really easy. I did notice that there is resources in, oh, I let's go really quick and see if I have an old resources chilling there. That's just not included. I do delete this. As I say, I was playing with SVGs, so I just want to see how that would work. Let's add a new folder. And I'm going to add a new folder inside of that called SVG. Hello, Ensign. Thanks for following. Perfect. OK, so let's grab some SVGs. I'm going to go over to the old G Music source code. And actually, it's this one. And inside of here, I actually, like I said, it started out as iOS only. So all of the resources lived inside of the iOS project. And I would just symlink them over. So we're just going to grab a lot of SVGs. And we're going to drag them all into here. OK, so let's go through. Let's make sure we change these. So these are going to be an embedded resource. That matters. We want to make sure we do this right. OK, so if I jump into my helpers, I have my image class that we added last time for like the album art screen size. Um, maybe that was the first session. I can't remember. But what I like to do is all these SVGs and things like that, I like to reference them from the static class. There's a couple reasons. One, if I decide to turn it into an image, things like that, I could just save state around. Right now, these SVGs aren't colored. Some of them are, some are not. I like to do the tinting and things like that. So certain things will be white, certain things will be an accent color. And if I do this all here, I don't have to jump through my code all over the place whenever I change these things. Or and before I've done like a dark theme versus a light theme, I let people swap things out. Uh, yeah, it just it's nice to be able to, OK, I swap it out in this one place. And now everything, where's the theming? All, you'll notice all the colors change and everything. So I can just say, hey, let's just go to the dark theme. And now all the accent colors changes on the menu. It stays the same. But elsewhere, things change, go to white instead of the different colors. So it's useful to have styles, um, a style file or images file, things like that. So we're going to start out here by throwing in a, an image. But instead of doing an image, I'm just going to do an image source. So we will do an SVG image source. Control Option Space again. And now we're going to pull this in from that NuGet we just brought in. And I will call this default um, album anti spell art equals new SVG image source. And let's jump over to the resources SVG called, it's just my app icon. That's what I use. So let's just call the icon. Nothing fancy. I'm going to copy that resource ID. And it also makes it nice if I swap these things out, it switches everywhere rather than having to find every place I reference these. I really like reusing resources and things like that as much as possible. Oh, it's not new. It's dot from, from, I can just do from a resource. So I say, hey, I'm using a resource. This is the resource ID. Perfect. Let's jump over to our song cell really quick and let's just see how this would be used. And I use that default album art image for like artist images when I don't have it, all kinds of stuff. So right now, before I had this update artwork that we did, that would go and download the artwork or get the URL, which was an asynchronous call. So I had to do some extra stuff in here. Instead, what we'll do is for now, let's just say 
we're just going to hard code this so we can see that it's actually working. Image dot um, source equals images. And inside of images, we will say default album art. And let's just return. We'll cancel out so it doesn't mess things up. Okay, run this. Yes, I know, unreachable code. The best kind, it can't ever blow up. All right, well, that icon does not quite look right. There's definitely an, an SVG image. It's not with, it's with the way that the SVGs are being parsed because they definitely don't look like that. Um, that's what it's supposed to look like. So for now, we're just gonna go with that, but there's definitely an issue with the SVG rendering. This is a very tricky SVG to rendering, and the SVG rendering support's very limited. So it should be able to do all my different icons just fine. Um, but that one is, like I said, a very tricky one, and it may even have problems with my play button because my play button's weird. You know, let's just check what that looks like. So let's go into the images. Source. Um, source dot from resource and again i like grabbing these because i don't want to type this out and spell it wrong and then be like what's going on all right so properties it's gonna copy that and i have done things with like resource helpers in the past where i just cheat so all i have to do is i'll, I'll search for them um old g music did that so all i had to do was play border button dot svg um could show you that code if that's interesting to anyone but <laughs> the resource helper would then go and look that up that lived in shared i think it's helpers helpers i don't know search in gmusic gmusic resource helper hey why is that only in the droid one uh, no, that's not the one I was thinking of. Oh well, it's inside the old G Music source somewhere, but it does little fancy. I should zoom this stuff way in so you guys can see it. Oh, it's wrong hotkey. Perfect. Okay, I can't remember. It's somewhere in there, but what it does, so I didn't have to do this full name because I hate doing those. I would have it search recursive or search for it for things that end the play button order thing. It does definitely mess up if you have multiple icons with different names in different folders, but I would always do the SVG. I'd do the folder and path, so that way I didn't have to do all this resource and things like that. And it would have just worked if I didn't do the full name. So I don't know, little things I like to do. Make my life easier, but I don't know if this library would support that. Actually, okay. I'm pretty sure this is going to blow up, or not display our image. But my lazy coding, I make sure that works. Nope, it doesn't. All right. Um, so what we'll do is we'll stick with this image source for now. I want to see if this is going to work just because I'm really curious. And instead of doing an SVG image source, what I'm probably going to do is I used end graphics to do all of my SVG rendering before. I'm probably just going to do an, an end graphics image source because I do like how easy it is to tie this into the FF image stuff. I've already talked to the guy who um, does the SVG rendering at Xamarin for Skia, which is the underlying stuff. And he's going to look into fixing it, but we'll probably just build an end graphics image source for now. Fix that. So right here, let's just do play button. Doing. This is up and we have some images working. Oh, yeah, that does that one really funny too. So we're yeah, we're gonna have to do like an end graphics image source because I use SVGs for everything. All right, so we're gonna ditch this one because we don't really need that. What we're going to do first though is we're gonna we are going to do a couple things to hook this thing up. Okay, what I want to do is since I am doing things a little bit trickier, I can't just use their built-in placeholder thing. So if I do image.placeholder, there's a loading placeholder. 
which we're going to call it. And there's also um, an error placeholder. We'll use both of those, but we're going to have to write a little bit different source. Um, okay, error. I'm trying to talk in code, and sometimes I can't do that. So what we're going to do though is we'll do we'll just tie this to the images. Is dot default album art. Now here's this will work when it's loading or if it has an error loading. It'll just default back. I tend to just have one called a placeholder, but it's kind of cool that it lets you swap between them. Now we're going to do something a little bit different right here. So this is where things are going to be a tad bit tricky. I'm going to remove this await um, and this um, URL task. And this is why. Then what we'll do is var URL equals await um, item dot, or no, sorry, URL task. What we can do here now is if URL task dot is completed, we can check if this completed instantly. Some tasks are just going to have things cached, and it's just going to be instantly. Because you notice that we did do, we did make it to where we can cache this thing. So sometimes it'll it'll return instantly. The first time it will, and the first time it won't. What's nice about this, let's put a breakpoint in there and see how this thing works. So if it completed instantly, uh, we're going to say if it did not, then we will do image dot um, dot source equals images dot def and this is probably just an, uh, over, I'm probably really just overly doing it, but default, I don't know. I just like doing this stuff anyway. What this will do is if it does take a while, so I could add, actually we can, let's exaggerate this as long as we remember to remove it. Because it would be very bad if I don't remove it. Let's jump into the getting this default. If here, if we throw in here, await task dot delay, we'll wait one second. That way there's a one second. Actually, let's make that three seconds. That way I have time to show you and talk with debugging. So this first time, I want to make sure that that artwork, as it's scrolling, will reset and go back to that default album art. There could be things my database could be going slower for some reason. There's so many hiccups. It could be for some reason. OK, it did not complete instantly, so it's going to use that. And let's remove these breakpoints and get the artwork URL. See, that's why I put a big delay. All right, and we still didn't get to see it. Let me remove breakpoints and run it. So at this point, we should instantly see um, the artwork, and then three seconds later, they should all update. That's weird that it did that. Oh, OK. So it all updated. Now let's jump back over to this, and I want to remove this, show you what would happen, which is we shouldn't have artwork at first. Or if it was scrolling and recycled and reused that view, we would still see the old artwork, which you don't want that either. It's not the end of the world, as long as it's refreshing. See, now it's white. And so the chances of this taking more than a millisecond, I mean, a couple milliseconds are very, very low. Um, this call happens nearly instantly, but I like to make sure that in case it doesn't, we update and make things pretty. And I don't want to just always, I could just always set this default album artwork, but in that case, I'm going to switch it and then instantly switch it back. And it's going to just pop, it's all those notifications are going to fire and it will technically slow down my UI. And especially while scrolling, I don't want to do anything to slow down scrolling speed. So I'll do that check to see if I need to. If so, it'll just use the cached image. This thing should already be loaded in memory since it's being used so much anyway. So it should be really easy to swap that in and pretty instant. All right, so let's run that again without my without my intentional delay now. Should pretty much instantly, there we go. That's exactly what I'd expect to see. I'm wondering why it does, oh, it's doing a refresh again because it downloaded the, it went and checked to see if there was new songs and that's why it had the spinner there. And that's why we saw that, that refresh. That's what that was. All right, that worked nicely. And whenever, one other thing I want to point out with the database caching, you'll notice um, that time it didn't, didn't do the refresh. The reason is whenever I go and get things from the database or whenever I go sync things, if I'm resyncing and it finds things, it will refresh everything and validates all the, all the objects um, 
that are in the, from the database backing in case they've changed and been inserted in the database. So that's why that first time we watch it do a double refresh. And this time it's like, oh, nothing changed. We're good. And it didn't actually do the refresh. Sweet. All right. So those song cells, um, I'm wondering, should we work on song cells or should we work on these navigation cells? Because those navigation cells are driving me nuts. Um, Okay, I don't know. Let's work on the navigation because this navigation page is ugly. The songs still need some work, and I want to adjust sizing. We go back to our reference app. Oh, I'm on dark themes, but either way, um, yeah, quite a bit different. So we'll need to get those updated with the extra icons and if there's videos and and whatnot. Okay, so let's yeah, let's work on this navigation. Let's try and get some of this. It's probably not gonna. We might have to implement that end graphics SVG renderer, which I wasn't planning on doing today, but maybe we'll need to just to get SVGs rendering right. All right, so let's jump over to here and let's see how we're gonna do this. Right now, actually, let me commit what we have. Be good citizens. SVG. Updated songs, artwork, this whole thing. Okay, commit, push. Yay, lots of changes. Okay, so let's look at that navigation. Um, the way I did it on the old one was I set a background image to a color, or I didn't do an image. This is um, actually a color. So you can do colors from a great, from an image in iOS, and so that's what I did is I do an image from a color, which was just a gradient. And so in this one, we'll probably do a repeating image. It'll probably work about the same. But yeah, I just made that a background color with an image, which is pretty cool to be able to do. Um, I don't think Forms supports that. Actually, no Forms doesn't, because it doesn't work everywhere. Maybe we'll do something like that, so iOS can still work that way. But I think we can do it with a repeating background image anyway. That shouldn't be an issue. That's all the color does anyway. Oop, wrong app. That's the app. Let's jump over. Actually, the old app, I can show you that resource thing if we want to jump back over, because from source, it's really easy. So inside of, actually, how did it in the app? Helpers, no, images. There's an end graph. Oh, that was per platform, which is the, I have a class in here, something about the images. Oh, end graphics extensions. All right, so this, the end graphics and the images does all of this. So notice I just do that path from that. And then I would do load from SVG. This does a thing to where I go and do find that with the file name without the extension. I thought I had, oh, maybe end graphics also has that, so I didn't need it anymore. I used to have it, but then end graphics has one does it that way as well, so I didn't have to. Maybe that's what it was. Oh, no, these are files. These aren't using resources on this one. It must have been a different project. I do have a resource helper thing that does that. But, oh, I digress. We don't need to look at that. All right, so let's back over to the navigation. And inside the navigation, right now we're doing a stack layout with an image and a label. In this, we're probably going to do um, a data selector, selection template, selector template, to switch between if it's an item. And you'll also notice we will need to do, if I continue with this UI, I'll want these switches for turning on and off the equalizer, and then turning on and off offline mode. You can put it to things that don't need to stream. So I like having that there. So we're probably going to have to have a selector to where we'll do what kinds we do. Um, so for now, we have those images there. We're going to switch that over to the SVG image one. Let's just do that for now. What we'll do is binding has image. Not getting, oh, that's interesting. We also have image source. So this is old code, and I don't know what that's tied to. Um, I think I was originally going to have that has image. And I said, oh, no, we'll just use the does it have the page, which we can still do that off of that. So let's jump over to navigation item. We have title. We have, we're going to want to, yeah, we'll probably want to give this a public SVG image source. We'll do the same thing we did before. 
Uh, do that, and then we will say um, image. Actually, let's just make it an image source. There's no need to hard code it to that SVG image source. That way, if we wanted to use an image for something, which I'm not planning on it, it can. There's no point in restricting it to be an SVG. And then we'll do, I like the idea of that has, if it has one, because we should, we might not even need that separate, might not even need a template. If we were to back to, if we have this has image and we make it to where that image disappears, if it's not visible, the stack layout will move this text all the way to the left, which will give that look I'm going for. The font, font will need to be different, quite a bit different, it's using a thin font. Maybe we'll swap it out because it's easier. All right, but for now, we'll just do this. We'll go here, we'll add this has image to our class. This will be public has image. And this will be return page is not equal to null. Now we have our image source. Excuse me, sorry. We'll jump over to here. Let's just grab the same cached image thing because it is nice and I like it. Code's already working, so why ditch it? We will add this back into our to our side navigation page for our image. And formatting. Oh, I didn't declare that yet. I really hate this. I promise I will stop complaining about that every time I do these. Okay, maybe I won't, but I hope I will. All right. And yes, I copy those. They're too long. I'm just going to type those out every time. Okay. Okay, now I can format the code. Okay, perfect. And I don't like this syntax, to be honest. Why write all that extra stuff when you don't have to? All right, so now we have that going. We have downscale, perfect. Size, height request will be fine for that. Let's add in there, this is visible. And we can even bind it this time. We have that source. You can say source. I call what I call that. I call, I call it image source. What do you remember? Oh, just image. Image makes more sense. Okay. Perfect. That's there. That's there. Now let's go into the root and fill. Oh, let's go to the images and add them first. Okay. So we actually look at the old code. Nope, not that one. This one's the old code. We jump back to the old code in my, if I can remember where the file that's at, I'm not doing good with that today, but I didn't actually use the images on that because it was just for the navigation, probably should have, but I didn't. I had a root, yeah, but yes, root view controller. And what I would do is I would just, here's the navigation, and I would pass these things in, and I just pass in search, artist, album, genre, so easy to know what those are. Let's jump back to our new one and make those match. So we will do search menu. And there are times where I like to separate these things out so they're easier to find. I'll do like public class menu. Sorry, public static class menu. And now I can just say search icon. And instead of doing get sets, I will say equals SVG image source dot from resource. And I can go copy and paste that thing. SVG search. Search has to be there. Oh, there it is. Go to the properties of this. Search. Okay. 
Okay, now so if I want to, I, like I said, I do that sometimes just to organize it to make it nice and easy for me as I'm doing it. And we now have a menu. So if I jump to are we side navigation, actually that has image. I could bind it to whether that image source is null instead of the page, but good enough for now. Root page. We will say search image equals images dot menu dot search icon. Let's run this and see if it loads. I believe this icon shows up black. I think all the icons are black. And then I would use tints to change their color. And we have nothing. Oh, because I did it based on the page. And the page on that one is null. It did do the shift to the left like I wanted, though. So that is nice. Okay, so let's just jump back to the all this because I have too many things open and I'm confused myself. Let's jump back over to the view model. We're going to go to the navigation item and we're going to say image source um, is not equal to null. So now we'll, we'll tie it to the image source instead. Now, Technically, it should have an image source if it has um, a page, but I was lazy and did not do that on search yet. All right. Hey, and we have an icon. Way too big. I'm wondering what sizes I did everything on the old one. On the old one, I believe on that one I used monotouch.dialog, but I still did custom cells in that. So inside of iOS, cells... I had menu, I had a menu element, which I did as a styled string. And then in here, image width is 35. I thought that's what we had on this other one. I do all the layout myself, but that still should be right. And then I had a menu section, which did the different file or the different, the different style for the font. I probably could bind the font style on here too, so the style would switch based on which one, whether it has the image or not, or is the menu type. Okay, so let's jump right back over to. Actually, that probably messed up all of me. Yeah, all of these indented now because they don't have icons. So I might change that to where it's. I don't know. We're gonna once we fill it all out, it won't be an issue. We can figure it out based off that. Um, I also had padding on that, though. That's the big thing, is the old one had padding. You'll notice that it had a decent amount of padding, actually. I think it was like five pixels all the way around it on each side. I think I'm going to switch everything to sixes. Sixes seem to look better than fives in most cases, and it's more standard. Everything uses sixes, not fives. Good rule of thumb. Okay, either way, I don't want to jump around in the old foot anyway. Um, this switch one would add the switch in again I used that 535 so we'll just do things on parts of six all right so let's jump back over to this and let's clean up the cell a little bit more I want it there so right now we do have padding so we should have that padding I wonder if this resizing has something to do with center center 35 that should look a lot better it should not be hugging the edges then what I would assume. I wonder if it doesn't respect that. Does this have anything for adding margin? Just curious what will happen if I set that to a 5 margin. It will inset that image for us. And I can, I'm still using 5 even though I said I was going to use 6s. Everyone's quiet today. Any questions? Anything want to see oh nope instead it just cuts it off and moves it up that's really weird all right so we are going to good go to some good old-fashioned layout solving the best way to do that is always background color equals blue oh not transparent i press down background color equals blue no better way to test to test this stuff We will also give the stack layout a different background color. 
Okay, so that, that might be in set 5. Oh, I know what the difference is. I let the image be that big, but I, in my old stuff, when I would go get images, my images were a lot smaller. So I would do image with that. I'm pretty sure. Yes. So I set the image size to 28, and then it centered it. That's That would be why. I wonder if I can do that, if I can request this image size. Jump over to... I forgot that's how I did it. So I still centered it, so we could do fancy stuff, but... Let's look at search icon. I wonder if it gives me any overloads to specify the size. Hey, it does. Vector width, vector height. So what was it, 28 I said? It's 28. 28, vector height, 28. And now I probably need to jump over into this and turn off this resizing stuff because it did have bound sample should be fine. Um, aspect, I don't want it set to fill. That's also part of the problem. I just want it centered. I don't remember. No, we're just going to remove aspect. Let's run this, and we should have a big blue box now with a small, ugly icon in the middle. One thing I also really liked about this image loading thing is it had a way, their SVGs had a way to override colors, so I could replace that black in this case and make it white. It still didn't do it right. I wonder if it's still something with stretching it. Visible, center, horizontal options, vertical options, center, center. What other things does this thing have? Sample. I wonder if I move, need to remove that down sample as well. Ways of view library. I don't. Need. Has anyone used this to know how to center an image in it? Maybe pulling out trusty Google. I think it'd just be those horizontal options. I should be able to request the outside thing and then center the image. Should hope that would look good. One more try. If not, I'll move on for now and then I'll look that up later and see how to fix that. And we'll fill out some of these other menu items and make it a little nicer. May look at doing that background image. Okay, that totally did not work. Oh well. All right. So let's go into this list view, and there dis I'm wondering if there a way without accessing the renderer to disable that separator. Do they have that? Um, separator color equals a transparent. Can I just say separate? No, I can't just say it. Oh, separator visibility equals none. That's what we'll do. That'll make that a lot nicer, and I almost because I'm just used to that. Background color. Is there an image background image for that? Alright. So I can't just set the background color image. I could I don't want to cheat and drop down to a custom renderer. That list view. Background image. That's really sad. Oh, no, I don't even want to make it. Picture. We'll just stick with what it is for now. We'll leave it nice and white, even though we're going to change that later. I'll think of it the best way to put it on that background. I mean, technically I'm using a color, but I wonder if I can do my own custom color. That would work to where I would have it switch out on iOS. It's been too long since I looked at that part. It's ugly. Looks better, though, without the lines, so we're getting somewhere there. Um, Jump over to that cell, and let's add in the the artist, because that's bothering me on the song cells every time I look at it. All right, so hey, we have an artist name there. Why aren't we showing it? It's probably the cell height. What is the cell height on this height request? Height request. That's for the image. 
over to the songs page. Do I have a height set on that? No, it could, I don't, could be the height. That's weird. What do we have for the height? That's not even really, it checks the height. None of the songs, or did I do the wrong? Let's Oh, I bet that's from our old sample data. When we were doing sample data, it was called artist name. What's it called on a song now? I just want to make sure I have that name right. Songs, and make sure it has a get. It does not have an artist name. That is our problem. So songs, artist ID. I might have to do, oh, I, call, I thought I had secondary display or something like that on this media item base so that way i could reuse them on everything add title and then i had detail text that's what i need to set it to detail text and like i said right now this is a song cell but i probably should make this the media item base um, because i do that all over the time ah thanks wiki you have any questions that you missed let me know all right so let's make this this detail text that's what it does and i think i'm going to move this song cell so i have a base media cell because i reuse this thing a lot if not it's only a couple lines of code to copy around but the song cell will use it the what the image is since i use those same names the artists will use it i basically just use the same thing all over the place i intentionally make these things as reusable as possible Hey, there we go. That's looking a lot better. We now have stuff and we can click. Okay, and we have artists. Um, almost out of time. I wonder if we do some navigation really quick or if I should fill out that menu more. Uh, why not? Let's do something with the artists. So let me commit what we had. Send that puppy along, push that up. Let's jump over really quick and see if before we run out of time, if I can go to the artist page. Uh, for now, we're gonna do this nice and simple. We will do here. So item selected, handle item selected, put this in here, right? So now this should get us out an artist. Var artist equals e dot selected item as artist. Okay. So the old way I did this was I did I didn't really like a lot of things. I'd have the view models and the view models could do extra filtering. So I would be able to say, hey, like do an album page. I think I'd go to the albums first instead of songs. Here, since we already have a songs page done, we'll just reuse that song page, which is cool. And the way I did the artist page was the binding context is just this view model here, which is really cool. If we do that, um, we can just take one of these, we can reuse the song one. So we'll probably do a little refactoring to make this thing work later. But for now, we'll go to the artist page. And what we will do is let's create a yeah, let's create a new page really quick, and we're just going to create a generic page. It will be public or, or generic Cameron form, XAML content page. We're going to call this one, um, let's just call it uh, list page. PD item list page. It's an ugly name, but we'll go with that for now. Now we're going to do similar to what we've done here with this model. Except over here on the media item list page, we're going to make this generic and we'll say type T. And now we can do T, T, it needs stuff. Let's add some usings. Option space does that. Command option again. Yay. Now I think I can do generic with that. I really, really hope so. If not, it's going to complain. I think I can do that. I might have to go change that. Wait. Oh, right. I don't want to automatically set that because we don't know what it's going to be. 
All right. Public must be non abstract. Okay, so I need to constrain. Yeah, it wants me to constrain that down to where it's a media or where it's. Okay, where T. Let's just say media. And so that's what we want. All right, so we're going to say when it's a media item base and see if it's happy with that. He must be non-abstract type with a public parameter. I don't know why it's complaining about that one. Abstract type with a public. Does media item base is abstract? Is it's abstract? Okay, so we can drop down to my base model, which is not abstract. Let's see if it's happy with that. Or I can tell it to be, um, I can just do the new constructor. But if it's happy about that, I thought I could do purely T. Because my old view models work that way. Yeah, I'm doing something wrong. Wrong. I forget how to use generics. That would be really funny. OK, so we're going to ditch that because I don't know. I'm having major brain issues where that's not going to work. And I don't know what I'm doing wrong there, but we can still do this another way. One side of the song, let's look at the songs page. We're going to reuse the songs page since that's technically what okay. And so the songs view model as public items equals that. That'll be good enough for now. So we're going to make this view model public. Actually, we can just grab the binding context. OK, so ignore what I was just doing there. I'm going to see what I was doing wrong. I don't know why. But we're going to quickly now navigate on this artist page just to show that we can. So far, um, what we'll do is songs pay, artist songs page, songs page. And now var vm equals artist page dot binding context as long page view model. So now what we can do is my old view models had these really, let me go grab one of these old view models to show you what I did. I'm going to move this to the database because it doesn't, it didn't make sense having it in the view models. View models just were complicated things. But in my old view models, I would have a way to be able to say, hey, make a view, a song view model from an, a, filter it down to an artist or things like that. And so I could go into a songs view model and this group info, songs one thinking of, um, artist songs view model. Oh, a subclass of songs view model. And then what it would do is you just set the artist and it would override the group info, which is really, really cool. Actually, I could just, that's not too bad. Or we just set it that way. I don't know, maybe we'll steal that for now. So, oops, not ah, open Slack. Quit, force quit. Sorry, misclicked. It's right next to my code icons, which I need to move that because I've done that twice now. Let's do artist song model. And so I'm just the generic class. That's, this isn't exactly going to work right because I have things slightly different. That not. Oh, songs view model. And the old ones had the whole group info thing I could set. Here, what I would say instead of saying the group info, I would do items dot group info equals group. Hey. So now what this does is my group info comes from my database class, which lets me now say I can add a filter where artist ID equals artist ID, and then I pass in it in as parameter. So I do it by value. So it lets you do weird stuff, not just certain strings that work. And yeah, from the song table. So if I do that, I should now be able to just say um, artist song page dot um, I, that view model. I need to set the view model because how I did it. Do I reuse this view model at all? 
I do. All right, so now we're just going to say public. We need to we need to change all this. And I'll probably just expose that group info because that works the easiest. So we can change that out. Okay, so fix me, leave that there. Um, so now I can say songs dot view model. Oh, and the view model doesn't set the binding context, so we're gonna do this ugly. Equals artist artist songs page dot binding context, which equals new artist songs view model and artist equals artist. Oh, I have these in the wrong order because it can't cast down, it can, can cast up, it can cast down. All right, so now what we'll do, this dot navigate, navigation dot push async, and we will just push this artist songs page. All right, so now that we're almost done, let's run this, and we should now have some, na some little basic navigation. Um, and it should filter those songs down by just the artists if I did everything right. I'm gonna look why my generic stuff didn't work right, because I've done that all the time. I must have a typo, I'm not thinking clearly. Too much talking and typing. Hey, and you'll notice that is only Blink-182. If I go into like the killers, there's only the one song. Hey, it's not exactly how I group it because it's kind of weird too, but it works. We now are grouping by artists and navigating. I like it. So I need to file this bug and see what's going on with forms. Something, a cell's being reused um, while I navigate. But either way, um, found one bug we need to file. But on top of that, we have things working now. Um, are there any questions? We have some basic navigation going. We have um, we've got quite a bit working on here now. The, Left navigation starting to look right. The song cells are looking pretty good. I still want to do a few more things to it, but overall they're looking nicely. I need to do some more theming stuff overall. The backgrounds on that. Still need to build this now playing screen. Um, finish building out the rest of these screens, but those shouldn't take too long. Most of them are pretty simple to do once we get the cells right. If there's no questions, Thank you everyone for joining. If you have certain things you want me to elaborate more on or things that you'd like me to work on as kind of like the next few steps, this is a big app, there's lots to build on it. But feel free to let me know the type of things you're looking for, things that interest you, and we can probably mix them in somehow or I can show you how, just, just whatever, whatever you guys want. So I wanna make sure that you guys are getting the most out of this. So feel free to leave comments, tweet me, ping me any way you want, email me. Let me know how you'd like how you'd like this to progress because I want to make sure you guys are getting the most out of it that you can. All right. Thank you everybody, and I'll see you guys next week.